An important part of video game marketing and any marketing really is to give your target audience an accurate impression of the product. Failing to do so can result in consumer backlash, where players feel deceived or shortchanged by something that wasn't what they believed they were paying for. But there are also times where artistic ambition wins out, where developers don't want their game to be easily pigeonholed as just one thing or another. Sometimes developers want their games to be more, adventurously hopping between genres and moods, delivering an experience which can't be fully categorized quite so easily. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 video games way freakier than you thought. Number 10, Max Payne. Max Payne was one of the first major video games to borrow The Matrix's groundbreaking bullet time stylistic techniques, whereby players could slow time to mow down fleets of armed goons while savoring every last nanosecond of it. The game was unsurprisingly marketed on the inventiveness of this mechanic, as well as its gritty film noir inspired detective story, while scarcely little mention was made of its more unsettling horrific atmosphere. And so nobody expected that Max Payne would be a deeply unsettling meditation on grief and revenge, as our insomniac protagonist murders his way across New York City, develops a painkiller addiction, and has horrible recurring nightmares of the night his wife and child were slaughtered. To make matters worse, the nightmares are actually delineated, frustrating platforming levels separated from the more conventional action, which with their reality warping visuals and sound are a far cry from the relentless shooting gallery most people were expecting. Number 9. Pikmin to the casual observer, that is, people who've never actually played it, the Pikmin franchise is just another totally adorable Nintendo IP where you control a fleet of cute little creatures. This is to totally ignore the game's alarmingly ominous lore. For starters, those bright colors belie the fact that the Pikmin series is a post-apocalyptic one, taking place on the remnants of the Earth-like planet PNF-404, which despite featuring so many Earth-like objects and characteristics, doesn't appear to count a single human being among its population. Extraterrestrial protagonist Captain Olimar commands hordes of Pikmin, often resulting in their deaths in order to collect enough spaceship parts to return home before his life support systems fail. As if that wasn't a grim enough setup, the various creatures which roam the planet are often skin-crawlingly off-putting, perhaps none more so than the kill-it-with-fire-worthy final boss of the game, the Emperor Bulblax. Simply, the first game in particular is absolutely soaked in existential dread, for Olimar, the Pikmin, and humanity itself. Did anyone expect any of that after taking a fleeting glance at the sprightly, inviting gameplay? Probably not. Number 8. Tomb Raider The original Tomb Raider is a really interesting example, because while it was largely built up to be a breezy Indiana Jones-esque action-adventure game with light puzzling, platforming and combat, much like the Indiana Jones movies, it was also unexpectedly creepy as hell. For starters, many of the levels generate an immediately eerie vibe by featuring only minimal background music. Not to ignore the fact that you're often facing off against terrifying gigantic animals, a T-Rex even, which attacks seemingly out of nowhere. But this is all perfectly manageable compared to the final Atlantis sections of the game, where you end up facing off against a host of inside-out abominations, like the legless gigantic mutant Atlantean. If you played the first Tomb Raider as a youngster expecting a fun, globe-trotting adventure game, you got something far more terrifying and not a single solitary soul saw it coming, least of all your parents. Number 7. Gone Home To take one look at the poster and aesthetic for Gone Home, you'd be forgiven for assuming it was a horror game, taking place in an empty house as a young woman has to piece together her family's mysterious absence. Reviews were quick to clarify that the game is an exploration-based walking simulator and not a horror game, which ultimately did little to quell the fact that Gone Home remains a thoroughly unsettling experience all the same. Even if someone tells you it isn't scary, the sheer quiet of the house, on a stormy night no less, is just too familiar to the unnerving experience of roaming around your own home with the sinking feeling that you're being watched. 
Gone home isn't the only so-called walking sim to generate unexpected unease through isolation. Firewatch also did it quite masterfully, but the irony is that other people literally telling you not to be scared didn't help one bit. As the old adage goes, it's quiet. Too quiet. Number 6. Super Mario 64 there's no denying that Super Mario 64 is one of the most important, influential, and downright brilliant video games of all time. But it's also one which, upon release, and today even, betrays its harmless Nintendo aesthetic through its pervasively off-kilter tone. Its technical innovations naturally mean that it's a far cry from anything the Mario series had produced prior, though at this point game console development wasn't sufficiently advanced enough that Mario could adequately emote and express himself. As was fantastically argued in a piece by games developer Kyle Labriola, Mario 64 has a uniquely nightmarish quality to it, feeling detached from the traditions of Mario games both before and after. This is in part due to the lack of NPCs in the world per the N64's limitations, making its otherwise expansive locales feel stark and isolating. The game's mood is generally far eerier than most Mario games, defined by a litany of nightmare fuel inducing enemies, most memorably that damn haunted piano and Unagi the Eel, the latter seeming like something that'd be far more at home in one of the Silent Hill games. Number 5. Echo the Dolphin Echo the Dolphin is an undeniable icon of 90s gaming that even those who've never touched the games will be easily familiar with, while probably also assuming that the popular franchise was basically an ultra-relaxing dolphin simulator. Oh, oh no, no no no. The original 1992 game is instead a crack pipe fever dream in which bottlenose dolphin Echo travels 55 million years into the past to rescue his fellow dolphins from an ancient alien race known as the Vortex. Gameplay quickly becomes anything but relaxing as you face off against ocean predators both present and prehistoric, often backed by music sure to aggressively creep out a well-adjusted adult, let alone a small child. As for the game's final boss, it's the Vortex Queen, a lawsuit baiting ripoff of Alien Xenomorph, which should basically be the last thing anyone considers putting in a game, which, again, appeared to be aimed at dolphin loving children. The sequels only amp up the balminess, yet, considering the original's iffy bait and switch, it's honestly surprising it performed well enough to justify a franchise at all. Number 4 Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Though the Call of Duty franchise has gone through a few makeovers over the years, you still pretty much know what you're getting in for where the campaigns are concerned. Four or five hours of mostly on rails cinematic action to rival a Michael Bay movie, right? For all its faults, Black Ops 3 at least tried to do something different. Even with the franchise already in the midst of a sci-fi makeover, Black Ops 3 dove headlong into totally uncharted territory, making its campaign a deeply existential meditation on transhumanism, unlike anything fans were expecting or prepared for. To be clear, Black Ops 3's campaign is only scarcely coherent at the best of times, but it's at least taking a hard swing at new ideas, centered around soldiers' use of a direct neural interface to battle remotely. Later in the story, this delves into the potential for human existence to carry on beyond bodily death, but suffocated beneath reams of nonsensical exposition and the introduction of a silly AI antagonist, it feels like the last thing your average Mountain Dew chugging teenager would really want out of that franchise. If you dismissed Black Ops 3 as business as usual for the series, it's really anything but, but that's for both better and worse. Number 3. Subnautica Though the open world underwater survival game Subnautica was in no way presented as a horror game pre-release, it so perfectly captures humanity's innate lizard brain fear of the unknown lurking beneath the ocean's surface. As beautifully inviting as the game's undersea expanses are, perhaps implying a relaxing time not unlike Echo the Dolphin, it isn't too long before reality smacks the player in the face with a reminder they're holidaying on an alien planet. Though many of the creatures you encounter are totally harmless and docile, many others are not, and discerning that difference isn't always easy, which is Subnautica's genius. It confirms just how bewilderingly isolating and terrifying the ocean depths truly are, where threats aren't generated by an overarching necessity for plot or story, but because that's quite literally the nature of the beast. 
the fact that the game is now also playable in VR only makes it that much freakier. Number 2. Bug Snacks PS5 launch title Bug Snacks seemed like a perfectly adorable, chilled out, family friendly adventure game in which players explore the mysterious Snack Tooth Island while collecting food shaped bugs. Cute, right? Yet slowly but surely, a sinister tenor begins to creep in. Firstly, as the locals called Grumpuses eat the bug snacks in order to transform their own bodies. And then near the game's end, when it's revealed that bug snacks are actually parasites. More to the point, bug snacks are addictive, and anyone who eats enough of them will be turned into bug snacks themselves, while Snack Tooth Island itself is also revealed to be made entirely of bug snacks. The end of the game sees the player desperately fighting off an attacking fleet of bug snacks before leaving the island, potentially resulting in many of the grumpuses you've been hanging out with ending up dead. But the uneasy juxtaposition of bright colors and chirpy characters with a dark undercurrent is perhaps best evidenced by the title song, It's Bug Snacks, which contains the telling lyrics, Come to Snack Tooth Island and discover it's bug snacks. You have to feel for any parent who installed the game for their small child expecting a harmless, adorable sit, only to see them faced with a deceptively nightmarish body horror game. Number 1. Night in the Woods Despite its suggestively ominous title, Night in the Woods was largely marketed as a charming adventure indie game in the vein of the Life is Strange series. With its sardonic sense of humor, quirky cast of anthropomorphic animal characters, and appealingly cute 2D art style, it painted itself as the perfect hangout game for anyone who wants to relax with a neat narrative experience for a few hours. And while Night in the Woods is often a joyous experience, it's also one suffused with the pains of growing up, centered around protagonist May, a college dropout whose mental state deteriorates over the course of the story. The game is on one hand a meditation on mental health, class, economics, and politics, but slowly nudges itself in a more heightened direction with the later reveal of a deity worshipping cult being behind the town's various kidnappings. It's quite a leap for a game which at first seemed quite tethered to the ground, for one starring animals with human characteristics at least. And that is the end of our list. Do let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other video games that are way freakier than people thought they would be. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more gaming goodness.